you know, I wasn't sure uh, what my reaction was going to be, um, but I wanted to start by thanking Alex, who's been needling me to do this presentation for about three years now. Kind of want to apologize, it's taken us three years to get to this point. And also want to point out that Jeff over here is the guy that did all the heavy lifting to get all of the approvals required um, so that we could come here and present. Um, as a member of uh, engineering at Nintendo, I'm really excited. This is one of Nintendo's first efforts to have a more visible open source presence. This is something that um, took quite a few levels of approval, but um, we're kind of excited to talk about what we're happening and talk about how we can engage with you um, as we go forward. So the process of moving to LLVM, to be honest, I've been following LLVM for probably about 12 years. And I remember having all these conversations with uh, the VP of engineering. It's like, why don't we go this way? And he quite rightly pointed out that in order for us to go this way, it needs to be complete. How do you show me it's complete? And I think we managed to do that. But he also wanted to know that, that you guys were going to be around for a while. And so one of the things I did for him was this graph. And, and this graph was just a way for me to show my boss that, that over time, the, the different colors are different organizations that are contributing. And sometime in around you know, 2010, we suddenly see involvement from multiple different organizations picking up. And by the way, I didn't bother updating the graph because by the time we get to 215, it's like there'd be so many little lines there. <laughs> And, and part of what it just shows is that it wasn't just something that one organization it was doing. It was like we could show major significant organizations that were committing to this technology and, and delivering on it. Um, people might point at it, and just so you know, the, the blue, the dark blue there, that's Chris Latner. <laughs> and uh, we all owe him a, a great debt. He, he definitely got things started. Um, one of the issues that we had, though, was we didn't have the staffing internally to do this all by ourselves. So we ended up going out and talking to a number of people and finding some people to partner with. So two of our biggest partners, um, Softech and Deja Tools, um, have kind of helped us in our transition to LLVM. Uh, to be honest, um, I don't know that we could have done it by ourselves. We would have had to hire a lot of people. Um, so what do we use LLVM for? So we use it pretty much for standard tools. Uh, Clang is the compiler. Uh, we've now moved to LLD being the default linker. Um, we do cross builds from Windows to basically an NVIDIA, NVIDIA processor. So we're kind of in the cross development space. Um, and you guys have lots of features that we're using. Um, it was really important for us to have the C++ standards conformance. Um, the fact that you provide the standard libraries, um, we've been able to take advantage of the undefined behavior sanitizer, which <sighs> pulled our butts out of the fire quite a few times because we could explain to them why their code doesn't work. <laughs> it's like your code doesn't work because you're not supposed to do that. Um, we use code coverage. Obviously, I already mentioned LLD, and we're starting to use LTO. Um, so, adapting to our platform. Um, to be honest, it, it's a lot of people have gone before us and worked out a lot of the hard problems. So, we had to do little things. We had to figure out how to add a Nintendo target. Um, to be honest, we spent probably a year trying to match our OS to what your tools provided, which in the long run was a good thing for us. We sort of make our OS a little bit more standard, a little less uh, different. Um, it took us, you know, several years to get there, but we're really happy with the results. Um, of course, now we're in a mode where we have to keep up with you. So I, I've seen presentations on this before, and, and we don't really want to get into it other than living out of the tree is challenging. Probably one of the hardest parts for us is that we haven't been staying current. So every time you do a new release, we have to go figure out what that did to us. So. Um, our challenge for this year for ourselves is to actually be on trunk so we see when we break, when it breaks, rather than three months later. So um, 
Obviously, our release schedules don't align. We have to release sort of on an internal marketing schedule, not necessarily on a twice yearly thing. Um, mm -hmm. I had notes and I'm like lost already. So, as I said, our changes to LLVM were pretty straightforward. We did the custom tuples for Nintendo. Um, we had to do a few little tweaks to the instruction scheduler. Um, and we kept getting complaints about optimized code debug info. And I'm actually going to talk about that later, but I'm just going to put the plug out there. Games developers don't turn off the optimizer for anybody. <laughs> Not at all. They're like, my game won't run. <laughs> um, Probably one of the biggest areas that we spent time in was uh, adapting libc++ to our platform since we didn't have a POSIX OS underneath. Uh, my team spent a lot of time creating a layer that looks like POSIX so that libc++ could work. Uh, and we spent time adapting the, the ABI and the compiler RT to match our, our hardware. Um, I kind of now want to go switch and talk about LLD. We're really happy about LLD. And, um, you know, in the beginning, I struggled. We got binutils LD to run. We got gold to run. It was a little bit faster, but we kept looking at LLD. And the LLD guys, and they're saying, hey, you know, we're two times faster than gold. You should really look at us. Um, and we th were going, hey, we can't quite use it yet. You don't support Arch64. You don't support our linker scripts. Um, we bit the bullet and worked on making sure that that happened in partnership with our, our vendors. So we're happy to say that we were able to link some major pieces of our technology. Um, the one on your left is HD experience. It's something our internal games team used for evaluating uh, uh, evaluating performance. So it's something they showed off at an E3. Um, the next one in the middle, which is Mario Kart, hopefully most of you know what Mario Kart is. So we can build a production Mario Kart and we can build um, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So we have some really good numbers. So we really appreciate what Rui and everybody in LLD has done. It shows really dramatic improvements in link time. So. Um, we're getting even better than the 2x that he was saying we would get. Um, you know, Zelda, we're seeing, what, three times better than gold, <laughs> five times better than, than utils. So this is really, really exciting to our developers. Uh, I think we have a quote from our games team. They said the LLD linker is very fast and it greatly contributes to speeding up iteration time. So. Our game developers are really happy about that, and, and we are as well. Um, we also found that using LLD made it easier for us to use LTO. And so with that in place, we started to see some good um, performance improvements in LTO. So um, here we're showing that for Zelda, we uh, get a good 3% almost. Uh, HD experience gets 3%. Uh, we actually have some better numbers for PGO and LTO used together. Unfortunately, we couldn't quite vet that through our approvals process. So I, you can come ask us about it. Actually, ask him in the front row about it. He'll tell you about how that all works. Um, that said, we're looking forward to doing more work and doing more work visible in the community, and part of it is our focus is on giving our developers better tools. And so we've spent a lot of time talking to our developers. Um, our developers are clear that no matter how fast you make it, iteration time could be faster. Uh, they also make the point debugging optimized code isn't great. Um, we've kind of struggled with that, but I've been noticing some improvements in the community. A lot of places where we were having problems were places where debug info was being dropped. So um, <laughs> we've been watching the work of our friends at Sony and Dexter and, and trying to look for our cases where we're seeing 
debug info drop, and that's actually an area where Nintendo plans to be contributing more in the future. And our developers, like every developers, want more, more optimizations. Um, as we said, reducing iteration time, it's not just one thing. So we've put a lot of effort into the linker, and, and now we're starting to look at scenarios to try and figure out what other bottlenecks we should focus on next. Um, do we need to focus on the compiler? Do we need to focus on compiler servers, uh, distributed build? There's a whole lot of things to look at there. Um, and finally, it's like optimized code debugging. This has been my thing for probably 20 years. Um, every time I go work with the games guys and uh, you know, I hear compiler people say, well, just use O0 and you'll see what's going on. And they're like, you don't understand. It's just, it's not the same. And, and so most of the ones that I work with actually tend to go into assembly mode, step through their code in assembly mode, and then go back to C code and try to figure out how did one become the other. So um, that's kind of the challenge that we have. So the first challenge that we're doing is is looking at making sure the debug info is correct. Um, the second thing that we're working on is trying to improve the quality of information that our debugger provides. Um, this is an area where we know we need to invest more. Um, a lot of places we've looked at, it's been the debugger's interpretation of the data didn't match the compiler's intent. So the user gets this mismatch and doesn't understand why. And Additionally, we really have problems with our developers where they know it's wrong, but they can't give me a nice little snippet that says this function is what's wrong. They often struggle. We often ask for reproducible, and then they kind of like, uh, we go send him out to fix it. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, wow. So... It took me 18 minutes at work to get to this point, and I'm already at <laughs> thank you. We really appreciate everything you've done. We're excited to be working with you in the future, and we're open for questions. <laughs> so uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the microphone there or call me over, and I can give you this microphone. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, more com comment, not a question. Um, so I work on Chrome, and we switched Chrome to um, Clang DLD, and we also got from our Windows developers the comment that optimized debug info is uh, pretty bad. And I think what, some of that is like a philosophical um, thing. I think many LVM debug info people think uh, correct debug info is more important than complete debug info, while Windows people rather like they they find if their debug info is like slightly wrong, they know they're debugging optimized code. And so there's a flag that you can set um, that changes that trade-off. It's called what, uh, inst combine lower debug declare equals zero. So if you could like, try setting that, and then uh -huh. you get more debug info, and it's sometimes wrong, um, but it's more complete. So that's something we do in Chrome. So maybe that's useful for you. Um, you know, and, and I actually had some experiences like that at MetroWorks where we found that not trying to over-restrict the lifetime of our variables even if the variable wouldn't always show the right value, it tended to give them a better sense of what was going on instead of trying to just go, it's only live for this one instruction. So I, I agree with that. I should have planted some questions in the audience. <laughs> hey, Bob. Uh, so uh, a thanks. Uh, for coming and talking. I know that's difficult in, in some corporations. Yeah. Um, and also super glad to see that this has worked out for you guys and I'm enjoying our switch. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I guess what I'm interested in is, uh, you know, we're now moving past the phase where the tools that console developers are using are a competitive advantage because we're, we're moving into a phase where everyone's generally on the same tools. Um, and, you know, the developers have forced it on you know, the, the yeah. different uh, compiler vendors, uh, console vendors. So the question is, the other tools, the IDE, the debugger, the performance analysis tools, uh, can you talk at all about what you're using? You know, what do you think, you know, is, is the next stage of open source evolution of tools? 
I'm, you know, I'm trying to think about what I can talk about and what I can't talk about. But uh, for whatever reason, we've historically been bound to Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, we're kind of looking at that as though we have to move beyond that. Mm -hmm. it, it is definitely a barrier. Um, I've personally been amazed at the speed at which people have shifted from Visual Studio to Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. It, you know, um, so we're talking about that and we know we have to deal with that. Um, kind of like I mentioned also, we were having problems with our debugger not interpreting things right. So uh, we feel like we need to move to an open source debugger so that when we fix the things in the compiler, we can fix the things in the, in the way the debugger interprets it. So that's clearly on our roadmap. Um, my personal mantra is more flexibility, not less. Um, what I've found is that developers don't particularly appreciate that we force them all to use Visual Studio. Some of them would rather use Sublime. Some of them would rather use other things. Um, Slick Edit is something I know some people use. And, and so one of my challenges over the next year and a half is to make sure that that we're not tightly bounding them to just Visual Studio. Um, the other thing, which was something I noticed at GDC, which was that we listened to some of the big game studios, and it was very fascinating to find out that if you take the tools developers for the game studios, which is actually not compilers, it's more like the pipeline and the assets and all that stuff, basically they took a survey and goes, how many of you guys use Windows? And two people raise their hands, and the moderator says, you two, come talk to me later. I'll explain why you shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> so there's definitely in that space kind of a desire of getting out of locked into Windows. Um, and, and that's probably driving things for us, too. Um, but it's a big open space. And so uh, to be honest, I see LLVM as a big platform for delivering a lot of stuff in that space. Uh, definitely stuff in performance analysis. I think it builds better off of LLVM than going and writing our own private stuff. So, yeah, I can't, obviously can't talk about specific things we're doing, but in general, more open. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of that was the commitment I got from the, the senior management in Japan, that, that they look at this as an area to invest in. And he actually said, we'd like to be able to come back and show you guys something and contribute something. So they're definitely not wanting to just kind of like sit back and ride the storm. They want to participate, drive it forward. So. Thank you. Yep. All right, so I guess if there are no other questions, um, uh, well, okay, one more. Um, since we don't get to have Zelda, can we get the Numario at least? Or... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, everybody, please uh, thank Bob for um, coming here.